Okay. <laughs> okay, so Chono, first of all, thank you very, very much for uh, joining me uh, on my channel at TGR. That's Gaming mm -hmm. Robbo. Uh, I know, obviously, you've you've taken out you know your own personal time to you know share you know some of the questions that I want to ask you uh, with me and obviously all of uh, my subscribers. So first of all, thank you very much for that. No worries. No worries. It's a pleasure having, you know, um, for you having me here. So I'm looking forward to it. Oh, thank you so much. Now, um, obviously, um, just so everyone knows, I have I had sent Cherno Samba some of the questions because I don't want to put Cherno, Cherno on the spot because he's, you know, so kindly given us his time to speak with us. So the first question I do have for you, Cherno, um, Obviously, reading through your book, you know, you, you explained, obviously, you had a passion for football at such an early age. Um, yeah. so, I mean, the first question is, when did you sort of realise that you had uh, that passion for professional football, or football at least anyway? I think I started realising it at the age of 10. Um, I was playing, obviously, before that, but it was just for fun. And, you know, um, it's one of them ones where you just enjoy yourself in a park with your mates and whatnot. But then at the age of 10, that's when he started hitting home a little bit because I started getting attention a little bit from that age. Yeah. And um, yeah, imagine at the age of 10 and I was getting... <laughs> but there was a guy, I was playing from a primary school and um, after the game, he just said, look, uh, I wanted to speak to you and your parents. So I thought, whoa. So that started, you know, then he came, you know, came to my house and spoke to my mom and dad. And that's when he started you know, hitting home that, well, I might have something here. That's amazing. It's just like every young man and woman's dream now, you know, for, you know, whoever loves football, their dream is to become professional footballers. It's amazing to hear that. Really, really is. At such a young age as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can imagine, yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously, the second question I have for you there, Chano, Um you said in your book that you were a Manchester United fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you were younger, uh, so obviously when you were younger, sorry. So who was your favourite player growing up? Now, obviously, don't I don't just mean a Man United player, but I mean in general, who was your favourite player growing up? Uh, at the time, I used to like Romario, and then it turned to the Brazilian Ronaldo. Um, so I used to watch him a lot, do the stuff that he did, and um, so yeah, those two were you know, um, very close to my heart at the time. Uh, but then gradually, I like Michael Owen as well. Uh, Michael Owen was someone that I always look up to. And, you know, at the time he was bursting into the scenes as well and he was scoring goals left, right and centre for Liverpool and England. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I think those three definitely was 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 my idols. Wow. I don't think anyone can... can argue with you when it comes to <laughs> Romario and, you know, the original Ronaldo. No one can argue with that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. And put Michael in there as well. So, you know, three top strikers. Yeah, well, can't argue with that, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, obviously, with Championship Manager and Football Manager, it gave you this iconic status. Mm. You know, they, you know, they they made you, you know, basically be the single best player to, you know, to ever be played on that game. Obviously, did you feel that you put more pressure on yourself when you started out, obviously at Millwall and so on, um, because obviously of that iconic status, or did you not put that much pressure on yourself at all? Um, absolutely, I've always said that with all my interviews, and I think. Um, there was a stage where I was actually working with my stats in the game and how I played. Um, you know, obviously because my stats were said um, sprinting, I was 19 or speed, I was 19. So I was always trying to use the stats to play my game. So it was confusing at the time. Um, and some of the people that I was playing against, they always used to tease me as well and said, I know your stats in the game, but you're not going to be doing that to me today. So I was like, yes, I'm going to do that. So, you know, it was bad. Again with that, so I put a little bit of pressure on myself with regards to that, but um, it, it was what it was. Um, you know, life itself is is tough anyway, so um, pressure, anything. So um, I didn't, I, I should not let that affected me a little bit, which it did. You know, but then again, I was only young as well, so yeah. you can argue that. But yeah, it did 
there'll be a pressure on myself in in regarding the the, the stats because it was confusing all over the place for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, obviously, your time at Plymouth Argyle was uh, cut short, unfortunately. Now, in your <laughs> book, you also mentioned that um, living in the southwest, uh, it was really good for you because it was a nice uh, family family orientated area. So did you ever think at the time when your career with Plymouth Argyle was cut short, did you ever think about joining Torquay United? You know, because I'm a Torquay United fan. So, you know, I'd love to have seen you wear the yellow, you know, the yellow jersey. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, it was only Plymouth. No, ex <laughs> no Exeter, no Torquay, mate. Sorry, man. No Bristol either. I know it's a further down, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> Um, after I left, it was just one of them. But I love the place. Um, I've still got a house there. So um, I call it my retirement home uh, because the people are phenomenal over there. Nice people. Uh, Plymouth always close to my heart. Um, a lot of people know about that now. And it's somewhere that I want to retire um, in the coast, mate. So definitely looking forward to it. <laughs> it's a great place for kids to grow up <laughs> in as well, Southwest, because it's such a slower pace of life. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, different people and, you know, I just love the people around there. Really nice people as well. So we try. Yeah, we try. <laughs> now, obviously, you played in five different countries, six if you class, um, you know, the Gambia national team as well. Yeah. Now, would you say that the experience that you had gained from playing in all those different countries um would you say the experience that you had, obviously you got, you had a, a lot to gain from that. And how would you feel that the younger generation now, you know, would be able to gain from, from that experience that you had? Yeah, I think it's, um, it's, it's no brainer really. Um, at the time for me, there was not many people that would go out to play abroad. Um, I think when I was doing it, um, Steve McManaman was at Madrid, David Beckham, uh, Michael Owen, so those era were the only um, uh, uh, batch that did it. But for my age, everyone was scared to go out abroad, to play abroad. But um, for me, at 19, I thought, you know what? I, need, I wanted to ch you know, challenge myself. So I went to Spain first. That was the first time I lived by myself. So I had to cook for myself and all that. So it was a new experience. But doing that, it has allowed me to learn the language because I can speak Spanish, uh, Spanish fluent. Um, you know, see a different culture as well. Um, the football is beautiful, as we know. The food is nice. The weather is nice. What more do you want in those kind of areas? <laughs> so, but it helped um, so to gain more experience, how to adapt myself in the game and in certain situations as well. So um, I will challenge everybody, you know, to go abroad as well and play. And a lot of people are doing it now from, you know, you see now people are going to Germany, you know, the Sancho's and Ademola Lookman and so forth. So now they're, you know, um, open to it. Whereas before, they, you know, I think it was just something that we were we were scared to do. But um, yeah, I would ask, and I'll, you know, I'll advise any young kid if they have the opportunity to do that because it helps you. It helps you with your development as a person. It helps you with your football career as well. And it just opens your mind and stuff. So um, yeah, it's something that I'll always advise people to, to, to if they have the opportunity to take it. It, 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 it's funny, isn't it? Because, you, you know, you mentioned, obviously, your Beckhams, your McManamans and your Owen. And obviously, they were at a certain point of their career where they went to, you know, Spain and Real Madrid. Obviously, with you being such a young player at that time, it's sort of you were sort of like the first person to, to do it, you know, to break out of England and go, you know, I'm young. I yeah. can offer a lot of, you know, a lot of my talent to any club around the world. So you were sort of in effectively way, you know, the breakout star to actually do that for younger, you know, for the younger players. Yeah. Yeah. I heard, I heard someone said that to me, actually said, you know, you were the first one to actually at a young age to do it. So that opened the door for everyone else. But um, I don't know. I just, you know, I, I love challenges. And for me, um, England, it was taking its toll on me a little bit because the deal didn't happen at Liverpool. So I was a bit um, sort of, you know, loss. Um, I just wanted a new challenge to come out of here, come out of the limelight of here, the public eyes, you'd say, the media, because the media circuit was so, so much onto me in terms of what happened and whatnot. So I just wanted to, you know, get out of all that and then just start my career again. 
And um, that's why I took the challenge. And um, it's something that, you know, I've, I've not regretted, to be honest. Um, having said that, I ups and downs while I was there because I thought that I took the challenges all because I failed in my own country. So therefore, that's why I was shipped out to Spain. So things were started coming back to my head, to, you know, to my, in my head and the mental state wasn't right because I was sitting there looking at my peers playing in the Premier League week in, week out. And I was in, at the time, I was in Cadiz, who was in the second division. So everything was starting eating me away a little bit again. And I was thinking about the Liverpool deal and all that. So um, I felt in depression and, um, you know, it was a period where I was in a dark place where I just wanted to, you know, didn't want to be here. But um, thank God I'm here today to yes. speak to you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, obviously, what could you tell, you know, not just men, but young men and women going through, you know, the sort of same problems as you had um, back in the days when you were getting ear bashed by, you know, someone who's, who's meant to be, uh, supporting you, mentoring you, and nurturing you. Obviously, go you know not just in sports related, but in general because it, it it obviously hearing yourself going through that at such a young age, you know where managers are meant to be, you know your not just a friend, but obviously your boss, but still meant to be nurturing you to to a higher standards. But it just seemed like reading your book, it just seemed like you just got ear bashed by near enough every other manager. So what would you say yeah, to young men it, and women who, who might be going through that? Yeah, it's, it's a tough industry. You know, a lot of people don't realise the outs of the game. Um, sometimes if your face don't fit, you've got to, you've got to toughen up. Um, you know, listen, we all have favourites. Um, I'm sure in any works of life, you see the bosses that they prefer this person, that that person. So they get leeway and stuff like that. That's, not, that's life, you know, and it's in football as well. You know, you have managers that have got their... Um, favourites I would say and um, sometimes your style of play don't suit them sometimes you know a manager brought you in but then he get the sack someone else came in and he doesn't fancy you so all that you know it, it accumulates with everything so you've just got to have a tough skin and just ride it through and just be strong um, what, one thing I would say is to talk to people because a lot of, lot of us you know we bottle a lot of things in and for example from my experience I can only talk for myself where um, whatever I was going through, nobody would know. Um, I think it's only people, you know, even my mom and dad already knew that I wanted to, you know, um, end my own life when my book came out. So I bottled a lot of thing in because um, I thought by speaking out or speaking to people, I was looked upon as I was weak. Whereas now looking back, I think I was weak for not speaking out, if, if you get what I mean. So, yeah, um, exactly. you know, you have to, got some, you know, you have, to, you have to talk to your friend, your mom, your dad, your girlfriend, your wife, your cat, your dog, whoever. But, Speaking, it, it it does help. And um, all I would say to people that's going through the same thing, just speak to someone. That's all. I certainly hope people do listen to that as well, because that's you know really, really important message to keep talking, as the slogan is nowadays at the moment, obviously. Very important. Uh, now, obviously, you said in an earlier interview, because I've watched a lot of your interviews online before, that um, for young footballers, they just need to work hard and not worry about the money. Um, mm -hmm. Now, obviously, because the money will come, you said at once at one yep. one day. But what you see nowadays is players who are getting paid, you know, fifty thousand plus a week, and in large, <laughs> they don't show why they deserve to get paid that. So, could you go into depth yeah. for us? You know, um, why young footballers need to focus just solely on hard work and you know getting their game up rather than worrying about the money. Um, again, I can only speak from my own experience. And if I knew what I say, I was, I, I, I wish I wasn't shown money too early. Um, I was shown the limelight very, very early age. And by the time that I got to 19, the football was out of the way. All I was thinking about, all I was motivated was to make sure that I'm finance, I'm financially secure after football, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I took my, in terms of my career. Because, um, you know, I was I was the most talked about kid in Europe. Um, I was sponsored by Nike. I could go to Nike Town and get whatever I want. Um, you know, nobody was telling me what to, nobody was telling me what was best for me. It was all about what they wanted me to hear. You understand? So in terms of the money, I think we're giving too much too soon. Um, and we haven't even done that much. And, you know, you go to Europe, the way they do things now. Well, at the time when I was playing was, 
the youngsters, they have to earn it. You know, they have to be, they always cut the people that the older players, they get more, 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 more salary than the youngsters. Whereas here, you know, I was 17 and I bought my brand new car, you know, from the showroom, you know. Now, a lot of people might say, look, you, you, you live that life and why are you saying that now? But as I said earlier, if I could change anything, I wish I wasn't shown that so early. I wish I was somebody that would just, you know, walk through the back door, nobody never heard of, and just work, work, work. Because the money will come anyway. Whatever you put in, you get out. So it's very simple. But if you're shown the limelight too easily, that can that can mess you up a little bit in terms of instead of following the goal, you 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 know, you tend to follow in the, the 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 money. And then by the time you know it, you haven't achieved what you wanted to achieve. So um that's what I would say. And that's what I've experienced. So um yeah, it's there's listen, there's no shortcuts in life. You have to work. You have to work. And whatever you put in, as I said, you'll get back out. There is no shortcut, especially in football. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I, obviously, like many other people, have played championship manager, football manager, <laughs> and bought you. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> and we've all fantasised how your career could have gone. Now, would you say... Yeah. It could, if you could go back in time, I know you've touched base on it already, obviously, but would you say if you could go back in time, would you change anything about your career at all? Just to work harder. Just, Just to work, work harder, harder and not, absolutely, and not to, because if, when, for example, when the deal didn't go free with Liverpool, I didn't want to work hard. I, you know, I needed somebody, so bad, I just scared a call. Uh, yeah, when the deal didn't go through at Liverpool, I, I didn't want to work harder. And, um, you know, I, I went in the training ground and we always have to do 10, 10, 10 runs. I'd want to do three and just pull out to do shooting practice for about half an hour. I just wanted to do five minutes and go in, have a shower and just go ahead. So little things like that where that's the only thing that I, I, I would change. I would put the work in and um, not listen to the hype. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, um. Now, me, like every other Englishman um, who loves football, uh, dreams about wearing the Three Lions shirt <laughs> and representing our country, obviously. So can you explain to me, uh, you know, for, for an armchair fan, you know, the, as far as I got, you know, Sunday League football, obviously. So can you explain to I us that. what the emotions <laughs> that you had inside of you when, you know, you wore the England shirt, uh, you know, representing our country. Mate, honestly, Rob, um, I remember at um, 14, I was sitting down in the sitting room with my mom and dad and everything, and the victory shield came up. So I was, we was watching it. So I was sitting there thinking, oh, I want to do what they're doing. I want to play for England and um, be on that TV. And I'll never forget that. That's still, now what she was dying, like, even talking about it. <laughs> And that was it. It was like, oh, I love what they're doing. I want to actually play for England one day. And I remember the first, my first call up and wearing that shirt, singing the national anthem. I was just, it was the boat, you know, you, I can't, like I said, talking about it now, I get, I get shivers down because that was the best moment of my life. Just standing there, singing the national anthem, wearing that badge, looking around and thinking, yep, I've actually achieved what I wanted to do because I set out certain goals for me, which was, to become a professional footballer, played for England or played for Gambia. I did that, all of that. Played for England at youth level and played for Gambia at the senior level. But, you know, there's, you can't beat that. And um, you just got to look at, you know, how many millions of kids would want to do what I wanted to do, to, to stand there and play for represent. It's phenomenal. And it's something that, you know, nobody can take away from me, mate. No, I mean, even just listening to how you're explaining that now, I literally got goosebumps from you yeah. just talking yeah. about that and sharing that emotion. Thank you, mate. You know, <laughs> uh, it's brilliant. brilliant. Uh, now, obviously, on a on a more what's the word I'm looking for? A more sort of sensitive note. Obviously, you mm -hmm. in your book, Harry seemed to be mm -hmm. more like a best friend to you um, yeah. rather than just a you know a regular agent. Um, so, I mean, can you explain to me, you know, how pivotal Harry was for your career? He was, he was. He was one of the ones that actually would tell me the truth. Um, he was the only one that, and my best mate actually, Festus, and they were the only two sort of things that would tell me the truth. And they they knew, you know, when the deal didn't happen, that 
<laughs> right, okay, so fine, this is what happened, but you've got to look at after football as well. So they've planned out certain route for me in terms of make sure that I invested well and bought properties and stuff like that. So he was pivotal for me. He was very, very, very important for me. And he's always, you know, advised me the right things. And, um, you know, I'm always forever grateful for him. And even now we we still um, um, partner up in, um, I've got my own football club in the Gambia. So um, he runs that. So we're still in touch, you know, daily. So, um, yeah, he's, he's somebody that very close to my heart as well. That's amazing. It really, really is nice to hear that there are, there are people out there Gen- who aren't just about, you know, getting the signing on fees from when you sign a club. Or I'm not going to name mm. any names because I don't believe in that. But you, you know, there are certain agents out there who believe that's their job. Unbelievable. And this is why I've done the transition being a coach now to help the next generation of players to become a representative so that what's happened to me doesn't happen to them because you get so many Tom Dick and Harry as agents and stuff. I call them transactional agents where they come in, do it, never hear from them again, yeah. never speak to you again. Sometimes as a player, all you need is, hello, Cherno, how did you sleep last night? How is your family? How are you okay? Have you eaten? doesn't cost anything. And it just makes you feel a little bit appreciated and stuff. But some of them, may, they don't get, they don't care about anything. All they care about is their pocket. And this is why I'm trying to eradicate that so that the next generation of players don't go through what I went through because I've been there. So that's why I'm now I'm doing the um, uh, player representative to, to, to guide this next generation of players. I certainly hope you are the, I, hope, I certainly hope that, you know, when you started thinking of, you know, this role, that that's the turning point where it actually stops it in the future because one day it will ruin football. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. And this is this is what motivated me to do it because I just I'm a prime example of it. You know, I I, I was I was I was um promised at the age of fourteen I'll be a millionaire by the time I was eighteen. <laughs> Little things like that. You know what I mean agents telling me all the things that what I wanted to hear. Not what was best for me but what I wanted to hear. And you know, some of them, don't get me wrong, there are some good ones out there, but majority of them are just, you know, no good. And this is why I'm trying to help so that the next players don't go through what I went through and then they can, you know, stay away from the bad ones. Good. Now, I think I already know what your next uh, answer is going to be for this question, but I'm going to see if I'm right or wrong. So in your, yeah. can you tell me what your main career highlight other than being a professional footballer? Because I know for so many interviews, your, you know, your main thing is you made it as a professional footballer. So I want you to use something other than using that. Um, playing for England, really. Yeah, playing for England. Playing for England, it, it meant a lot to me because I remember, like I said, sitting down saying, I want to do what they want to do. And how many people can say they achieved their lifetime goal, let alone, you know, um, to, 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 to set something out and then actually go on to achieve it. So I would say, yeah, playing for England. Um, playing for England and my my goal against Wales, um, I think, I, yeah, I got man of the match. We won 3-1, scored one, made two. That was one of the ones that I would always, you know, always stay with me. Obviously, scoring a goal for Plymouth as well against uh, Coventry, that stays in mind as well, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> that's one I like. But um, and scoring for Gambia as well. But um, you know, playing for England and playing for Gambia is one of the the highlights of my career. I would I would say. Yeah, I thought I thought as much because it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, you've mentioned obviously you've completed your coaching badges. So, what do you think, or you know, what do you hope to achieve next for your career? Because obviously, like your book says, Cherno Samba still in the game. Obviously, for some people who haven't actually realised that uh, you do have a book, but yeah. um, what what's next for you? Because obviously, you got your own team. Obviously, you know you run that uh, in Gambia with Harry. Um, obviously, you want to start doing this, you know, stopping these agents and so on. But what's the next part of your career that's going to help you and obviously other other young men and women footballers? Well, like I said, so the. The, the initial thing was um, to become a coach. Uh, when I was age of 29, then my England ex-manager, uh, Dick Bate, who sadly passed away a few years ago now, um, he was very pivotal to me. He's like a father figure to me. And you know, every time I talk about him, because he's no more, 
uh, get very emotional. But, um, you know, uh, he's somebody that at the age of 29 said to me, um, what's next? Get into coaching. So he got me sorted. So I've done my badges up to the A license. And um, so while I was doing that, while I finished my A license, I was getting so many calls from players, sporting directors and coaches to try and speak to their players and mentor them. So it was getting too much of frequent of that. So I then said, right, okay, I know I want to be a coach and it's the same to work with the next generation of players to mentor them and help them. But it's the same thing as well to become a player representative. So that way I can work with them one-on-one and it just made sense for me to do the transition, being a coach and being uh, and to be a player representative now. So that's where I am at now to guide and help the next generation of players. Um, maybe in the next few years, I might come back to do my coaching, um, uh, um, get a club and just do my coaching. Ultimately, to try and coach the national team of Gambia and try and qualify them for African Cup of Nation or a World Cup. That's the ultimate goal. But in the meantime, I'm, I'm, I'm loving what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm helping the next generation of players to, to, to represent them so that, you know, to steer them away from these, these bad apples. And um, I'm loving that at the minute. And uh, it couldn't be any better. Oh, that's so good. Now, obviously, going back to your book, obviously, it's a fantastic read, Cherno. It really, really is your book. Um, I'm not one usually to read books. I'm not going to lie. I'm not one of those guys. But your your book, I was glued to. It felt like I was actually living living your career with you. And obviously, whilst reading it, I could actually envision ever everything that was going on. So, what really made you want you know to write your book? You know, your autobiography, in a sense. And it was two reasons. It was very simple. Uh, one was to tell the world what's happened to me, um, what I went through, what went wrong, things went right, everything, just to just to pour out my, my, my heart because I was going through depression, as I said. And I just wanted to know, I just wanted to, the world to know what went wrong and what's happened to me in my career and what I was going through. So that was one of the reasons. And the second reason was to guide the next generation of human beings, not just footballers, but anybody can read it and learn from my mistakes and say, right, Cherno said, if you do it this way, this is what you will get to the top. If you do it that way, you won't get to the top. But also just to help people, you know, so that they can um, relate to me and, and learn from my mistakes. I've done a lot of mistakes, as you, as you, as you know, in the book. So, um, so th- those are the two motivations so that, um, you know, I can help the next people, human beings at large, to know that, um, you know, they can, they, can, they can learn from my mistakes. So those are the reasons why I came up with the book. And the book was a... Uh, it was a therapy for me, um, writing it. I think it took us about two years. But, you know, as it was going through, it was like a therapy. Once it was finished, it was like, <sighs> it was like the whole world was just, <laughs> up, like, you know, relief. And it was a, it was definitely a therapy for me. Yeah. Um, now, um, once again, going back to your book, you mentioned in there that uh, England, tra- um, England trains the players, uh, the way that England does train their players, sorry, it needs to improve. Um, I.e., for example, you said that the mindsets looking at other countries or maybe other teams, um, they always think straight away that they are better than us. And obviously mm-hmm. you said that you would like to obviously try and get this to change. So how would you be able to, if you had that position, obviously, how would you be able to get that change uh, to stop young yeah. youngsters thinking other people are better than them? I think it's changed now. It has changed now from the time that I was playing to the time that I was writing my book to now. Um, when I was when I was playing, you know, um, it was more of, you know, you go to Europe in the Brazilians, the Spanish, the thing, they were very, it was all about um, tight space, possession work. You know, it was all about possession work, you know, at the age of eight, nine and 10, very short-sighted games and stuff where at my time it was 11 a side. So you don't have the, 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 the tight space to work on to try and, you know, um, develop your skills and stuff like that. Whereas now, you know, I think, you know, kids now that, you know, we have so smaller sided games as well now. So it has changed now, definitely. So I'm loving what, what we're doing now. So um, I think that's done. So I don't, there's nothing that I would change now. Just let them enjoy it more and not to be too robotic, you know, because sometimes we can coach the, you know, 
coach that Billy out of place. And I think at my instant for me is oh, I, I did have that because my strength was to come deep, pick up the ball, turn. Because if I turn, you won't catch me. And I was very skillful and explosive. Where some of my coaches, they took that out of me. Where it was like, you stay in the box and set it, get in the box and then head it. And can you believe Rob, my weakness was heading the ball? <laughs> <laughs> you mean you have a so, weakness? A weakness? <laughs> yeah. You know, my weakness is and I you know, you stand there and, and head the ball. So little things like that, whereas I think now it has changed, you know, and they just let the, they just got to let the kids enjoy themselves, mate. And, you know, they got a raw talent, so you can coach them, but not too much, too much of it. Yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, burning question for you, Cherno. Um, did you play championship manager? Um, if not at the younger age, but obviously when you got older, older did you play it? And did you buy yourself and see what could have happened to you on that game? You know, a lot of people ask me this and I loved it. I actually played it. And I like it. And I would always I will always buy myself because at first when someone told me about it, I said, look, you're great on this game and stuff. So I went and bought it and then said, mm, not bad, you know. So <laughs> so I used to buy myself. I remember one time I was at Cheltenham and I got myself to the Champions League and all that stuff. So And I won it, actually. So, um, yeah, I used to play it. And, um, you know, but a lot of people don't know that I did play it. So, yeah, here's a, here's a review. I did play it and I do play it. I love it. You... <laughs> and I always say this to people, you know, champion, champion manager, it's something that football manager, it will stay with me for the rest of my life. I'll be... 101 with a stick and people will still come to me and talk to me about football manager championship manager and I'll stand there I was, I was the guy <laughs> uh, you wouldn't believe that game championship manager 0102 the 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 year that obviously you exploded yeah. that that game is still being played mm. by tens and tens yeah. of thousands of people I mean I know yeah what? yeah it's the best one I think, for me it's the best one mate honestly <laughs> <laughs> Can't beat 0102. <laughs> I mean, I know you know a lot of people still buy Football Manager, and rightfully so because it's so much more in depth. You actually see a snippet of real, the life real f- football, but exactly, it doesn't have Chono Samba in the latest Football Manager. So you've got to go back to the 0102 so we can play with you. Yeah, uh, speak to the gamers. They need to put me in there somehow. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, one thing which uh, is a true topic, and it's really close to me because I don't know what I need to do, because I get a lot of messages on Facebook from young African um, males who want to get involved with professional football. And, you know, they ask me, I don't know if, if anyone else gets these messages, but they ask me to try and get their name out there. They send videos, they send pictures of, you know, their their football and on all that jazz and they want to be noticed they want to try and get out of where they are now and try and make a name for themselves so this is something that i would love to actually show these guys obviously what you think um is the best thing for them to obviously try and do whilst they're chasing their dream um you see look it's it's, it's everybody wants to be a footballer you know everybody in the whole world everybody wants to be a footballer but the statistic says it all you know you've got to be um you've got to be lucky at the right place at the right time to get found and if where they are and they're playing football and they're doing well someone will see them and one thing i'll always say to youngsters don't be obsessed of just wanting to be professional footballer because if you don't make it then what happens education is key and that's one of the things as well if i could go back I'd make sure that I stay in school. I would make sure that I've done my studies because at least if you don't make it into the football, you'll always have something back to fall on. But then I've so, I've known so many people that just was bang on about being making it as a footballer and they haven't, they just put their education out of the way. They didn't make it and today they haven't got nothing to do. Yeah. So if they'd stay in school do their education, then at least they can have something to fall back on. So education is key. You can play your football, but at the same time, at the back of your mind, do your studies because it's absolutely vital. It won't get you rich, but it'll get you a steady life. It will get you a steady life. And in some cases, it gets you where you want to get to. So um, what I would say to those people that contact you and stuff, keep doing what they're doing. 
if it's meant to be, it will be. But they need to take their education important as well. Not just to be want to be a footballer and football. Everybody wants to be a footballer. And the statistic everyone can see that is, you know, out of eleven or twelve players, there's only probably one will make it. You know, uh, out of hundred kids, there's only probably about seven or ten will make it. So it's not it, it, because everybody wants to be a footballer. You know, you go just. Uh, 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 Africa, wherever, everywhere in the world, everybody wants to be professional footballers. So, um, what I would say to them, as I said, is um, let them keep, carry on playing their football. If they're good enough, right place, right time, someone will find them and they'll get the opportunity. Good. That's a, that's a nice way. Now, um, the main question, which uh, I've purposely left for last for you, in your book, mm -hmm. you uh, made an interesting notion. Uh, about uh, yourself, Freddie Adu, uh, Tonton Zola, uh, for a potential future advert for Football Manager Game. Now, this is something that I, and obviously a lot of other people would love to see, is all three of yourselves on a channel together. You know, I'm going to put this out there on my channel where we could have a, uh, a four-way call and, you know, discuss, you know, all three of you, you guys' um, you know, career, um, you know, points of what you thought was good, what was bad and so on. But, uh, you know, other than that is, you know, seeing what you guys uh, say is your uh, Dream 11, Dream Team, um, you know, just actually seeing all three of you guys together because obviously it's something that you would like to do obviously with football manager and if uh, if they see it if they don't see obviously what you see as a as a great advert it's something that you know i think every championship manager and football manager player would love to see on a channel you three being able to talk to, together so the burning question is i would love that to happen on here it'll be good it'll be good mate it'll be good um i did the advert for the 2017 advert for the championship manager i did that one with the advert but i think what you said it'll be interesting because obviously we're the three that everyone talked about and you know uh, give praises and stuff um however saying that i heard i'm not you know just here saying that Fredo do is um he's not keen on those things because he feel that football manager ruined his life and his football career um so that's why um for me I think that's an excuse, you know, I will say that right now because um, you get pressure anyway. Life, as I said earlier, life is pressured itself. So if you feel that something like that has affected your career, then personally for me, if it, I couldn't come out with that excuse, then that means I wasn't strong enough mentally. So, you know, you've got to ride with everything and if you would have done gone on to do well and become the next whatever because of championship money, then you would have praised the game or say, this is why I've got to do it. So the fact that to, to, to use that to say that's messed up my career, then I think that's a cheap excuse. Um, that's personally for me anyway. Um, life is pressured itself. So you just got to have a tough skin and a uh, thick skin and just, you know, go with whatever. So, but as you said, I would love to have that one day, all three of us, just to see where their head is at as well, they can see where my head is. And to have that conversation, that would be amazing. You know, that would be amazing. But hopefully that can happen. Hopefully the gamers can get that set up and it'll be in your channel, mate. That would be great. I would <laughs> love it. And I'll tell you what, I would be... Oh, I, I, the words don't even come come into my mind nor my mouth to even think about and express how that yeah. how amazing that would be. Um, now, that, I mean, obviously, as you know, that's all of my questions that I had for you. Um, obviously, I want to give you the floor to you know to tell us you know what uh mm -hmm. you know, what you know, anything else that you have on your mind or anything about your book or any sort of questions that you'd like to ask me at all no it's good it's brilliant you know it's been great talking to you and uh, we've been speaking for uh quite a time now so i'm glad we've managed to get it suited out so <laughs> in term time permits with this craziness what's going on so yeah. but um I would say it's obviously people out there, they can go and check my book and um, uh, just to, you know, see, they can learn a lot from it. It's not about trying to promote it or anything. It's just the, 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 um, the, the, the message is for them to learn wherever they're going through because I've been there. Um, I've been there, as I said, I've been there, done it, got the t-shirt, as they say, I've been in the system. And in terms of, you know, mental health and depression, 
it will help you because um, just speak to someone because sometimes you can bottle a lot of things in and thinking you're doing yourself a favor. And I think that's the, that's the wrong thing to do. Cause I was, I was very hiding. I was very good at hiding stuff in terms of that. So um, just talk to people, just talk to someone. That's what I would say. But yeah, it's been, it's been great talking to you, Rob, honestly. Oh, thank you so much. And it is, like I said to you before we started recording, uh, you know, I, I was starstruck already as soon as, uh, you know, as soon as it showed your picture there and so on, but it has been absolutely amazing talking to you because you do worry that certain, you know, certain people you think, oh, you know, uh, sometimes you think is <laughs> someone going to be too much expectation is not, and it's not there. But I mean, for you, it just shows you that you, you made it as a professional footballer. You've done everything which young man and woman streamers to, you know, to become, and you're still so humble. And that is so Thanks, amazing. Mate. That is so amazing. So thank you very much for, you know, for, uh, you know, giving me a chance to speak to you and, yeah. you know, show, show the world that, uh, you know, you're still in the game quite literally, like your book says. Um, so it's just really amazing. And, and Absolutely. Thank you so much. But, uh, but I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Rob. Thank you, mate. And we'll be in touch, mate. Anything. Well, thank you very much, Jen. Well, anyway, guys, th thank you very much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed yeah, the video. Love. And um, like Cherno said, obviously, if you do need any uh, any any advice and so on, obviously, please go and check out his book. But apart from that, guys, thank you very much for your time. Smash a like on the video and make sure you subscribe. Take care, guys. This is TGR. That's Game and Robbo saying thank you very much and look after yourself.